boys and girls, right? I apologize now if throughout this video you can hear drilling, sawing, hammering, anything like that, because apparently I live on a building site now. It's six o'clock in the evening, okay? I'm home, filming this, trying to relax, enjoy cooking, but I've got Bobby f***ing bandsaw out the back, doing something with his wood. And then down here in the shop below, I've got Dewalt Driller Dave doing something with his partition. I don't know, there's just drilling and hammering just all the time at the minute. There's only one type of drilling that should be done in the evening, at least it's Christmas soon. <sighs> oh no, fucking, I need to move. I need to move. Next year, I'm moving out of this goddamn place. Anyway, enough of my crap, enough of my ranting. First of the Christmas recipes. Yes, actually Adam's getting off his ass and doing some Christmas recipes this year. And the first one is obviously roast potatoes. I have done a video on this before, but it was a long time ago, so I'm updating it, changing it slightly. Um, but yeah, roast potatoes, the cornerstone of any good Christmas dinner. Everyone loves a good roast spud, but there is a science to them. There is a trick to them, to getting them right, getting them perfect. Okay, can't just sling any old potato in a pan and hope for the best. But there are certain steps you need to follow in order to get it right. So watch the whole of this video. By the end of it, we're gonna make banging roast potatoes for your Christmas dinner. And you'll get laid in the evening. And if you make if you make really bad ones, you won't. This is how life works. Roast potatoes equals sex. Just get on with it. Right, if you enjoyed this video, please stick a like on it, share it as well. Please subscribe as well, and when you do, hit the grey notification bell. So when I upload a video, Susan at YouTube will send you a carrier pigeon notifying you that I've uploaded a video so you can watch it. But anyway, look, let's get on with this. Roast spuds. Potatoes. This is where it starts. Now, as the great German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once said, not all potatoes are equal. Now, I live in the UK, so I have access to probably different potato varieties than you do. You know, maybe if you live in America, you can't get these. There's no way around that. Maybe you've got a different sort of potato that has the same properties. I don't know. But here in the UK, in my opinion, the best potato to use for a roast potato is a King Edward. It is the perfect spud to use, okay? Don't just use any old spud that you get from the shop. You can also use Desire, which are the red skin ones. And at a pinch, you can also use Maris Piper as well. But get King Edwards, they are perfect for the roast spud. But now, we need to get them peeled. I've also got a large pot here as well, because we need to par cook them. So I'm just going to get these peeled. And you'll notice with King Edwards, as you peel them, they've got like a little recess, a little notch, or as I like to call it, a bum hole. You can kind of hook it out if you want, kind of dig it out, it's up to you. But I'm going to peel these, you don't want to sit there and watch me do that, and you also probably don't want to hear DIY flipping Driller Dave downstairs either. So I'll be right back. 3,000 whoop who's later. Right, now the potatoes are peeled. I'm going to take my knife and just kind of cut them into whatever size you like really, but don't cut them up too small because if you do that, they'll tend to disintegrate and you'll end up with like mashed potato. So you want them nice and substantial. I like them quite big. You know, man. Uh, yeah, I like mine quite chunky, so what I'm going to do is cut them in half. It doesn't really matter how you cut them. But I want sort of that sort of size. I'm gonna stick them in the pot, get on with the rest. So there's all my spuds, all in the pan. Make sure they're roughly the same size as well so you get even cooking. And all I'm gonna do is just rinse them under the tap, give them a bit of a wash, and then fill the pan with water. Here we go. So there's my potatoes, and I've got plenty of water in there as well. I'm gonna get this onto a nice high heat and then a generous pinch of salt. You've got a lot of potato there, so don't be afraid to use a lot of salt. And I've got my roasting tray here, this battered old thing here. Right, it's encrusted with crap and crud. It is clean, it's just well seasoned, but this is the best roasting tray I've ever had, honestly. It was, I've had it for like 13 years, and it makes cracking roast potatoes. And once I've brought the water to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer. And we need to cook the potatoes for five to eight minutes, okay? I wouldn't suggest walking away and leaving these to it because you might overcook them. Basically what we want to do is cook the outside. We're par cooking them. Okay, so the outside goes nice and soft. It starts to crumble. And you'll start to see when you press it with a knife, you'll get like little craggy bits on the outside. But if you cook it too much, they'll just fall apart. There is a fine line, okay? But have a bit of confidence, cook them, keep an eye on them, and I'll bring you back when we get to that step. 
one debt to society later. Okay, right, so we are about three to four minutes in, and I'm just gonna have a quick check, see how they're doing. I'm bringing you in a bit closer, hopefully you can see that. You can just sort of see, look, the edges, just starting to break up. But we do want it to go a bit further, so I'm gonna leave these in for another couple of minutes. So I'll bring you back in a minute, or two. Okay, right, I think these are ready, so I'm gonna shut it off, and I'll take one out, pop it on this board here, and I'll bring you in a bit closer, down here, so you can see what you're looking for. This is perfect, right? You can see it's just starting to break apart at the edges, okay? The knife goes in, but not all the way. That means that the center's not cooked, which is what we want. But that is a start, folks, of a great roast spud. But I need to get these drained, get them out of that water quick. Okay, so now that we've got our potatoes drained, we need to treat them with a bit of love. And what you want to do is leave them until most of that steam has drawn off. Okay, because steam is moisture, and moisture is the enemy of crispy roast potatoes. Just give it a couple of minutes till most of that's gone off, and in the meantime, I'll get the oven on, and we'll smash up some garlic and thyme. So I'm going to add some aromats to my roast potatoes. You don't have to add this, or you can switch it up. I'm using garlic and thyme, sage would be brilliant, rosemary, anything you like really. All I'm going to do with these garlic cloves is just take my knife and just bash them on the side. I'm going to use some fresh thyme, because this goes really nice with potato. I'm just take a few sprigs, but you don't have to be fussy with it. It's a simple cooking. I'm going to scooch my aromats over there, and I'm going to get my roasting tray. Old Faithful. Now really it's up to you what fat you use to roast your potatoes in. But I am going for duck fat. Why? Because it's bloody delicious. You can use goose fat, you can use beef dripping, you could use like plain vegetable oil. Um, it's entirely up to you. And I'm going to go in with about one and a half heaped tablespoons because there's quite a lot of potato there. Don't go overboard, don't like, have it swimming in there because you don't want to deep fry them and they'll be too greasy. Um, and what I'm going to do now is get this in the oven, get it nice and hot, and then we'll add the spuds. Right, okay, so that's been in the oven for a couple of minutes, so we'll get our tray out. Now, what I'm going to do now is get these into our roasting tray, but be careful, right? Treat them with a bit of respect because they're still a little bit delicate on the outside. I might have taken them a bit too far, but do not worry. Next, I'm going to chuck in our aromats, our thyme, just kind of rip it up. Garlic as well, in it goes. Good old pinch of salt and pepper. Get that all in there. Then what I'm going to do is take a second spoon and then using both of them, just kind of turn them in that flavoured oil and that fat. What this will also do is kind of craggy up the edges a bit because that's what's going to give you the ultimate crispy roast potato. And then kind of spread them out a bit so they've got a nice even space. They've got plenty of room to roast. But these suckers need to get in the oven quick, like now. But listen, those potatoes are going to take around 30 to 40 minutes. A nice hot oven, and then turn them over every 10 minutes or so, just so they get a nice, even, golden colour. But when these come out of the oven, boys and girls, we are in for a treat. Well, I'm in for a treat, because I'm going to eat them. But when you make them, you'll be in for a treat. It's been 40 minutes. I think they're done. Should we get them out of the oven and have a look? Let's get these puppies out. Give me that sot. <laughs> these. Now that is what you call a roast potato. Now ideally I would like a bit more colour on there but as we all know my oven is bullshit, so I have to make do. But I'm just gonna let these sit for a second just to cool down slightly and then we'll do the crisp test. Proper roast potatoes. But look, let's do a crisp test. Look at that, look. Look at that, folks. That is a work of art. Oh, beautiful, crispy roast potato. Mm. Oh. That was hot. Why did I put that in my mouth? Knowing full well, it's just come out of the oven, it's going to be blinding hot. Oh, I don't care, they're good, man. They're crunchy on the outside, fluffy in the middle, 
really nice flavour, that salt, the pepper, the thyme and garlic. That is how you make proper roast potatoes for your Christmas dinner. There'll be arguments over these, I guarantee. I guarantee. So make sure you make extra. But listen, that's how I make roast potatoes. If you've got any suggestions, any different ways that you do things, leave a comment down below. And also, if you enjoyed the video, stick a like on it, share it to your friends and family and your arch nemesis. But listen, there's gonna be more Christmas recipes coming up. I'm gonna do some other bits and pieces. I'm not doing like a full turkey dinner, right? Can you imagine the stress of filming an entire Christmas dinner? Bread sauce, parsnips, sprouts, potatoes, turkey. In this kitchen as well, in this kitchen, right? So. I'll do like component pieces. I might actually do a goose this year. Yeah, I might show you how to do a goose. Well, not do a goose. <laughs> no one's down for that. Cook a goose. But I'm gonna bugger off because I've got my pie in the oven, that's finishing off. And I'm gonna smash these roast potatoes in my face. So I'll see your very merry festive faces in the next video. Bye for now. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. I know it's not actually Christmas, it's November, all right? But I've got to get these videos in early. Sorry. Ho, 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 ho.